if you awaken from this illusion and you understand that black implies white self implies other life implies death or shall I say death implies life you can feel yourself not as a stranger in the world not as something here on probation not as something that has arrived here by fluke but you can begin to feel your own existence as absolutely fundamental I'm not trying to sell you on this idea in the sense of converting you to it I want you to play with it I want you to think of its possibilities I'm not trying to prove it I'm just putting it forward as a possibility of life to think about so then let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream and that you could for example have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time or any length of time you wanted to have and you would naturally as you began on this adventure of dreams you would fulfill all your wishes you would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive and after several nights of 75 years of total pleasure each you would say well that was pretty great but now let's um let's have a surprise let's have a dream which isn't under control well something is going to happen to me that i don't know what it's going to be and uh you you would dig that and come out of that and say wow that was a, a close shave wasn't it and then you would get more and more adventurous and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream and finally you would dream where you are now you would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living today that would be within the infinite multiplicity of choices you would have of playing that you weren't God because the whole nature of the Godhead according to this idea is to play that he's not so in this idea then everybody is fundamentally the ultimate reality not God in a politically kingly sense but God in the sense of being the self the deep down basic whatever there is and you're all that only you're pretending you're not
One fine day you realize, to your astonishment, there is no way at all of having your mind anywhere else but in the present moment. Because even when you think about the past or the future, you're doing it now, aren't you? And that results in a very curious transformation of consciousness. You feel that, you, or that the present moment is flowing along and carrying you with it all the time. Just like the flow of the Tao. The flow of the Tao is as it, what we would call the flow of the present. See? And you're with it. There's no way of being anywhere else. The Jung Yong, the book called uh, The Unwobbling Pivot, says the Tao is that from which one cannot deviate. That from which one can deviate is not the Tao. Or to put it into the form of a Zen story, the master Joshu said to Nansen, what is the Tao? Nansen replied, your everyday mind is the Tao. Joshu asked, how do you get into accord with it? Nansen replied, when you try to accord, you deviate. First of all, I'm going to talk about ideas which come strictly out of Lao Tzu's book, The Tao Te Ching. And uh, of course, the basic thing in the whole philosophy is the conception of Tao. This word has many meanings. And the book of Lao Tzu starts out by saying that the Tao which can be spoken is not the eternal Tao. Or uh, you can, there's a pun in there, which you can't quite um, put into English. You can't give all the meanings. Because the word Tao means both the way or course of nature or of everything, it also means to speak. So, uh, the actual opening phrase of the book, the way which can be spoken, described, uttered, then give it its second meaning, the way that can be traveled is not the eternal way. In other words, there is no way in which the Tao, or following the Tao, can, uh, there's no recipe for it. Uh, I, I can't give you any uh, do-it-yourself instructions 
A, B, C, D as to how it's done. Now that's awkward, isn't it? But we can gather what it is uh, by absorbing certain atmospheres and attitudes connected with those who follow it. And from the art and the poetry and all the expressions and the anecdotes and stories uh, that illustrate the philosophy of the way. So this word then, the, the way or the course of things, is not, uh, you must understand this, uh, some Christian missionaries translated Tao as the Logos, taking as their point of departure the opening passage of St. John's Gospel, in the beginning was the word. Now if you look up a Chinese translation of the Bible, it says in the beginning was the Tao. And the Tao was with God and the Tao was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by it, and without it was not anything made that was made. Uh, so they've substituted Tao there. Now that may make a very funny effect on a Chinese philosopher, because the idea of things being made by the Tao is absurd. <laughs> the Tao is not a manufacturer, and it's not a governor. It doesn't rule, as it were, in the position of a king. great Tao flows everywhere, both to the left and to the right. It loves and nourishes all things, but does not lord it over them. And when good things are accomplished, it lays no claim to them. In other words, the Tao doesn't stand up and say, I have made all of you, I have filled this earth with its beauty and glory, fall down before me and worship. The Tao having done anything, you know, always escapes and is not around uh, to receive any thanks or acknowledgement because it loves obscurity. And Lao Tzu said the Tao is like water. It always seeks the low level. So it's a very mysterious idea. Tao then is not really equivalent with any Western or Hindu idea of God, because God is always associated with being the Lord. Uh, there's always the idea of the king and the ruler attached, but not in the Chinese Tao philosophy. The Tao is not something different from nature, from ourselves, from our surrounding uh, trees and waters and air. The Tao is the way all that behaves.
And so the Chinese, the basic Chinese idea of the universe is really that it's an organism. And as we shall see when we get on to Zhuangzi, who is the sort of elaborator of Lao Tzu, uh, he sees everything operating together so that nowhere can you find the controlling center. There isn't any. The world is a system of interrelated components, none of which can survive without each other. Just as in the case of bees and flowers, you will never find bees around in a place where there aren't flowers, and you will never find flowers around in a place where there aren't bees or insects that do the equivalent job. And what that tells us secretly is that although bees and flowers look different from each other, they're inseparable. They, uh, to use a very important Taoist expression, they arise mutually. So, you could say positive and negative, to be and not to be, yes and no, light and dark arise uh, mutually, come into being. There's none is uh, cause and effect, it's not that relationship at all. It's like the egg and the hen. So as the bees and the flowers uh, coexist in the same way as high and low, back and front, long and short, loud and soft. All those experiences are experienceable only in terms of their polar experience. So the Chinese idea of nature is that all the various species arise mutually because they interdepend. And this total system of interdependence is the Tao.